Good morning, good morning, YouTube. Welcome, Myron Golden here, Bible Success Secrets Bible Study. Um, today we're going to be talking about, yes you can, maybe. <laughs> and I'm going to talk to you about a particular verse of scripture that a lot of people quote that is true because it's truth, but it may not necessarily be true for them because they haven't applied the prerequisites. So that's what we're going to talk about. That's why I said, yes, you can, maybe. So on YouTube, just so y'all know, if I look this way, I've got people here with me that I'm talking to and looking at. Also, I want to make this announcement. If you get a message or a comment to one of your comments on my YouTube channel, and it looks like a picture of me and it says message me on WhatsApp, that is not me. That is a scammer, spammer pretending to be me. So make sure if you, if you like, I'm not going to ever put a quote. I'm not ever going to put a comment on your comment on YouTube and say, inbox me for more information. That's never going to happen. Not in a hundred thousand years. So whenever you see that, just know that somebody probably trying to scam you out of money. It is not me. Same, same thing on Instagram. Like, like, People trying to sell you crypto, they're trying to sell you investments. You're, I'm never going inbo to inbox you about an investment. I'm never going to inbox you about crypto. I'm never going to inbox you about, about message me for more information. That's not my groove, okay? So just know that um, that's somebody who is um, seeking to gain something for nothing and using somebody else's reputation to do it. So uh, in Philippians chapter 4, um, the Apostle Paul wrote a verse that I'm sure we're all very familiar with. And... The, the verse is four, Philippians 4.13, and it says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. And, and that's why I titled this, Yes, You Can, Maybe Not, right? And the reason I say maybe not is because verse 13 is, it's a crescendo. It's not, this is not an isolated doctrine because there are no isolated doctrines in Scripture. Every doctrine, every doctrine in Scripture is, is supported by another doctrine in Scripture. Um, and New Testament and Old Testament do not contradict each other. They support each other. Christ himself said, I, do not, I did not come to destroy the law, but I came to fulfill it. And so understand, understand this whole, just because you wear a shirt that says, I can do all things through Christ with strength of me, that does not make the verse apply to you. Just because you know what it says and you say, I can do all things through Christ with strength of me, that does not necessarily mean this verse applies to you. You have to do the things that came before it before you can claim this. If I were going to give this another title, I might call it how to be peaceful, um, how to be peaceful, powerful, and plentiful, right? Because it, it's a series of things. Uh, promises in scripture are oftentimes conditional. Some, some promises are unconditional. But some promises are conditional. And for conditional promises, you must meet the condition or the promise does not apply to you. So, and this is not even a promise. This is a statement that Paul made because he was already doing the things that came in verses 1 through 12 in general, specifically the verses 4 through 12, which is where we're going to start today. Um, Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Now, that's a really interesting verse. And a verse that a lot of people have a hard time with because they don't, like a lot of believers, a lot of Christians don't like the idea um, or don't believe that they can be perpetually joyful. So it says rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. So when we see the prefix re, the prefix re means to do it again. So when it says rejoice in the Lord, it means again have joy in the Lord, but it says rejoice in the Lord always. So it's saying again have joy in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice, or and again, I say again, have joy. So I'm going to use the word again instead of re, instead of the prefix re, like for rejoice. Again, have joy in the Lord always, and again, I say again, have joy. That means that as a follower of Christ, it is our, this is, this is, a, this is a mandate, this is a, this is a charge, this is a challenge to live in a state of perpetual joyfulness. Well, how do you do that? Can I get a witness? Like, how, how am I supposed to do that? They cut me off in traffic, right? How am I supposed to do that, right? And so um, um, I got bad news from my doctor. How am I supposed to live in a state of perpetual joyfulness? Well, it tells us, and I'm going to give that to you in a minute, but I'm, I want to I emphasize it one more time. Again, have joy in the Lord always. And again, I say, again, have joy. That's a lot of joy, right? And, and what's really interesting to me is how many people who are Christians, who are church-going people, who are, quote, Bible believers, who, quote, love the Lord, are miserable and angry most of the time. That's fascinating. Like, you're a follower of Christ, you shouldn't be miserable or angry 
or sad or depressed. Um, by the way, I understand that depression, people suffer with depression. I, I get that. But sometimes the depression people suffer with is something they are doing to themselves. I'm not going to say always because I'm not a clinician. I don't play one on television. I'm not pretending to be one. But I am telling you that feelings are always the result of focus. If you don't like the way you're feeling, change what you're focused on. People say, but you don't understand this bad thing happened to me. Well, that may be true. Maybe this, quote, bad thing happens to you. But two things about a bad thing or a good thing happen happening to you. One, you don't know whether it's bad or good till you get to the end of the story. And as long as you're still alive, you're still in the middle of the story. Right? So, you, like, and every, it's impossible for anything to exist with only one side. And I know you've heard me say this a thousand times. And you're probably going to hear me say it a thousand times, a thousands more. And that is... The law of polarity states for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Have you ever seen a one-sided piece of paper? Have you ever seen a one-sided piece of bread? Have you ever seen a one-sided coin? No. Why? Because it cannot exist. It's not that it does not exist. It's that it cannot exist. And when you understand that a one-sided, if a one-sided coin, piece of paper, piece of bread, one-sided pancake can't exist, a one-sided situation can't exist. So if it has a negative side, it must have a positive side. And the feelings that you're having that are negative, you are having because you're focused on the negative side of that fact. Are y'all tracking with me, my people? So, so, Myron, how do I do that? It tells us in the next verse. It says, let your moderation be known unto all men, for the Lord is at hand. The word moderation means self-control. It means gentleness. It means appropriateness. Um, so I'm supposed to let my moderation, what does that have to do with being joyful, Myron? What well, has this to be, do with being joyful? It says, let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Well, if the Lord is at hand, that's the secret. What, is that, what does that mean? At hand, within arm's reach. He's present. What does it say in, um, in, in, in Psalms chapter 48? God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. What does it say after that? Therefore shall not we fear, though the earth be removed, though the mountains uh, uh, shake with the swelling thereof, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. We're not going to fear anything. Why? Because the Lord is at hand. What is it telling us? When the Lord is at hand, our focus should be on the Lord who is at hand. What happens when we're not focused on the Lord who's at hand? Then we begin to see things that are not there. We begin to see things that are not there. You remember the story in uh, Mark chapter 4, don't you? Mark chapter 4, Jesus says to his disciples, after he gets done speaking to this big crowd, he said, Let, he's at, the, he's at the, um, the Sea of Galilee, Lake Gennesaret, He's there. He says to his disciples, let us pass over to the other side. Well, I've actually been on a boat on the Sea of Galilee. And when we took off on the boat, the sun was shining. By the time we got out in the middle, it was raining. It was wind was blowing. I was like, wow, that storm came out of nowhere because the storms come up over the mountain and down into the valley. And then all of a sudden, all havoc breaks loose. Right. So the storm came out of nowhere. Jesus was on the back of the boat. He was asleep. The disciples who were fishermen by trade. They spent, they spent their lives on that water. They were so afraid they were going to die. They woke him up and said, Master, don't you care that we perish? Don't you care we're about to die? Well, it says, Jesus got up and he said, he, he, he rebuked the wind and he said to the sea, peace be still. And I love the fact that it, dis, it distinguished the fact that he rebuked the wind, but he didn't rebuke the sea. He rebuked the wind but he spoke to the sea. Why? Because the wind is a picture of false doctrine. Be not tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. False doctrine has to be rebuked. But he spoke to the sea because the sea is a picture of false doubt. The sea was threatening to bring a destruction that it could not bring. See, the scripture says in that story in Mark chapter 4 that the storm was so bad that the boat was now full of water. And as my brother Mike, I've heard him say before, it's a good thing when the boat is in the water. It's a bad thing when the water is in the boat. Right. And so and so the water was so full in the boat that that these people who made their living on the water were afraid they were going to die because they forgot who was on the ship with him. And they forgot what he said when they got on the ship. Let us pass over to the other side. He didn't say, well, let's go out here and see if we can't drown in this lake. Let's go out here and see if we're going to die in this storm. That's not what he said. Let us pass over to the other side. And so. All of their fears should have been erased when they came to the back of the boat and they saw Jesus sleep on the boat, right? And, and, and I love the fact that it doesn't just say he was asleep on the boat. It says he was asleep on a pillow. <laughs> the, 
Bible is so funny. Some of the details are so hilarious. Jesus is letting them know, I am both calm and comfortable in the midst of the storm. And instead of being all worked up and all riled up and all worried and discontent and scratching your head and pulling your hair out, maybe, maybe what you should do is go find a pillow and get yourself calm and comfortable in the midst of the storm, right? He said, let your moderation be known unto all men for the Lord is at hand. How do you, ha- how do you, have, how do you walk in a state of perpetual joyfulness? By reminding yourself that you are ever in the presence of the Lord who saved you. That is the way you have perpetual joyfulness. Why? Because the scripture tells us in the book of, and I don't remember what book it's in. It might be in the book of Ezekiel. But it tells us that in his presence is fullness of joy. And I don't remember where it's at, but it's in the Bible. I promise you it's in there. I'll look it up later. It's in there. So in his presence is fullness of joy, which means when I am in his presence, I'm, I, I can be full of joy. Not only am I full of joy when I'm in his presence, I'm full of peace. I'm full of power. I'm full of gratitude. I'm full of thankfulness. I'm full of, I'm full of all of the fruit of the Spirit when I am in his presence and aware of it. Well, the fact is, if God is, omnis- if God is omnipresent, I'm always in his presence. But the difference is, me being in his presence isn't the thing that makes the difference. Me being aware of the fact that I'm in his presence is the thing that makes the difference. See, here's what has to happen for us. We have to decide whether we're going to be more like David's brothers and King Saul and be more aware of the giant than we are the promise and the presence of the Lord. Or are we going to be more like David, who's more aware of the promises and the presence of God? We have to decide whether we're going to be more like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and be more aware of the presence of the Lord than we are the presence of the king, the presence of the furnace, or the presence of the most mighty men who threw them into the furnace. They were so aware. It's so interesting when we read in um, Daniel chapter 3, the story of Nebuchadnezzar, and he makes this giant idol of himself, and he makes this decree that everybody should bow down. And literally tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people are bowing down to this idol of Nebuchadnezzar, and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who are his governors, his princes, his counselors. I, I, I do a whole lot of stuff, but I think, I think the first commandment was, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Right? So... They said, uh, we can't do that one, <laughs> right? And then Nebuchadnezzar liked them because they were good at their job. He brought them and he said, look, here's the deal, guys. I, I, I know y'all probably didn't understand the decree. Y'all probably don't, didn't realize that it came actually from me. But y'all were supposed to bow down when the music played. And y'all didn't bow down. And so I'm going to give y'all another chance because I like y'all. Right? I'm going to look out for y'all because y'all my dudes. Y'all my boys. So I'm going to look out for y'all. Okay, I'm going to give you another chance. We're going to play the music again. This time, though, bow down, okay? Because I'm the king, and I don't want all these people tripping. He didn't say that, but that's the gist, right? And so, Nebuch- Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in Daniel chapter 3, here's what it says. We are not careful to answer thee in this matter. He said, they said, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us, and he will. Now, how many of y'all know... We got some folk in our lives that are able to help us, but they just ain't willing. (laughs) We got some folk in our lives who are willing to help us, but they just ain't able. Happy is the day when we find willing and able in the same person. Can I get a witness? Well, that's what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said about the Lord. He said, they said, they said, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Our God whom we serve is able to deliver us out of thy hand, and he will. But if not... See, they, they, didn't just trust, they didn't just trust in the power of God. They also trusted, they also trusted in the sovereignty of God. He is able, he's willing, but he doesn't have to. And see, I, I believe that one of the biggest problems we have in modern day churchianity is that we have a God that, we are, that, is, that follows our commands. We have a God that we've conjured up in our own imaginations. We've got a God that has been manufactured by preachers and teachers and evangelists instead of the God of the Bible. And so um, it says, it says, we're not careful to answer this matter. Our God who we serve is able to deliver us, and he will. But if not, we, still we ain't going to bow down. It says, then was Nebuchadnezzar full of rage and full of fury, and his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That means he went from like this, come on, guys, y'all just bow down, everything's going to be all right. And they said, no, we ain't going to do it. And they said, heat that furnace up seven times hotter than it's ever been heated. We're going to kill them seven times deader than anybody's ever been killed. 
Like when you trust in the Lord at that level, it causes people to lose their mind. Nebuchadnezzar snapped out. You're like, what? Y'all can come on in. Yeah, you can come on in. You're, you're fine. Just if you walk behind that camera. You're, there's seats over there. You're fine. Y'all come on in. It's all good, bro. Don't even sweat it. So, 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 so interestingly enough, interestingly enough, they weren't afraid. Why? Because they were more aware of the presence of the Lord than they were the presence of the fire. They were more aware of the presence of the Lord. Come on in, sister. More aware of the presence of the Lord than they were the presence of the, the king. They were more aware of the presence of the Lord than they were the presence of the danger. And see, here's what we have to do. You want to use your discipline to do something? You want to use your self-control to do something? You want to use your moderation, your appropriateness to do something? Use your moderation and your appropriateness to remind yourself that wherever you are, he is there with you. If you are, bo- if you are born again and you've trusted in the death burial, and Jesus, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ as the full propitiation for your sin, then you don't have anything at all to worry about. Nothing. Because even if you die, you win. Right? What, isn't that what he said? He said, hey, he said, here's what, here's what Jesus said. He said, um, he that believeth in me shall never die. I mean, he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever believeth in me shall never die. And then he asked this question, believest thou this? Do you believe it? See, the problem is not the truth. The problem is we have a hard time trusting the truth. Right? Because we've not disciplined ourselves to trust the truth. Maybe it's because we spend so much time looking at the electronic income reducer, watching other people live pretend lives so we can celebrate their pretend lives to the neglect of our real lives. I don't know. Maybe that's it. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little sidetracked. I don't know why y'all got me all worked up this morning. <laughs> breathe, Myron, breathe. Pump the brakes twice and breathe. Okay, so, so let your moderation be known unto all men in the Lord's hand. So what is he saying? He's saying, be joyful. How joyful? Perpetually joyful. How, do I, how can I be perpetually joyful? Be willful. Willful? How, how can I be willful? willful? Willfully what? Be willfully aware of the presence of the Lord. You want to use your self-control for something? You want to use your discipline for something? Use your discipline, your appropriateness, your self-control, your gentleness to remind yourself that you are always in the presence of the Lord because in his presence is fullness of joy. Then it says, and be careful for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. So he said, be careful for nothing. So here's what he's saying. He's saying, be joyful, be willful, don't be careful, be prayerful. Oh, snap. What happened? What happened, my people? And when it says careful, the word careful there doesn't mean careful. Like when you're walking along the edge of a cliff, you're careful not to fall over. The word careful means don't be full of anxious care. Don't be full of care. The word careful there is the word anxiety. Right. It's 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 um, wasting present energy on a future outcome that's undesirable. Stop doing that. Stop visualizing and expecting the worst. Jesus said, take no thought for the morrow. The, the words take no thought translated from the exact same Greek word that says be careful for nothing. Jesus told us in Matthew chapter six, he said, take no thought for the morrow for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. What does that mean? It means don't worry about tomorrow's problems. Don't waste today's energy worrying about tomorrow's problems. Why? You're going to need tomorrow's energy for tomorrow's problems. So you might as well work on today's stuff today. I wasn't going to say this, but it just came to me. It's interestingly enough that in Genesis chapter one, when God created everything out of everything out of nothing, it says, Genesis 1, 1 says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, right? That's fascinating. And then he starts going into all this detail. I mean, the whole chapter of Genesis chapter 1 could have been the first verse, right? But then he starts breaking stuff down. And I believe the reason he did that is because God is creative. That's one of the most important things he wants us to know about himself because it's the first thing he tells us about himself. He doesn't tell us first that he is love, even though he's love. He doesn't tell us first that he's righteous, even though he's righteous. He doesn't tell us first that he's, ju- that he's just or that he's holy, even though all of those things are true or omnipotent or omnipresent or omniscient. The first thing God tells us about God is that he's creative. Why is that so important? Why is it important to God that that's the first thing he tells us about himself? Because the first thing he tells us about us is that he created us in his image, which means he created us to be creative and he made us to make stuff. So like people say, I don't know my purpose. I don't know my purpose. I don't know my purpose. Well, I'm going to tell you your purpose right now to, because I'm going to tell you your purpose first. and I'm going to go back to what I was saying, uh, to live in your creative space and make the world a better place. That's your purpose. What I mean, live in your creative space. God put a different aspect of his creativity inside of every single one of us in this room and every single one of us who's watching on YouTube. God put a different aspect of his creativity inside of us. And you know what most people do? Most people neglect the aspect of creativity 
God's creativity that he put in them, and then they're envious of the aspect of God's creativity he put in somebody else. Like, what are we, what are we doing? Why don't you celebrate the part of God he put in you? Because he gave that to you for the assignment, for the part of his mission he wanted you to complete. And I can't do your job. I can't do GT's job. He can't do mine. I can't do Zach's job. He can't do mine. But I can live in my creative space and make the world a better place. Zach can live in his creative space and make the world a better place. Um, Keenan can live in, like, we can all live in our creative space and make the world a better place. And then we don't have any competition. Then we're aware of the fact that we don't have any competition because we don't have any anyway. The only person who can do the thing God puts you here to do is you. And uh, sadly, if you don't do it, it ain't going to get done. So, don't be careful, be prayerful. Stop wasting today's energy worrying about tomorrow's problems. Don't be careful, be prayerful. Um, prayer. Let me talk about prayer. So many people believe the purpose of prayer is to change God's mind. Well, good luck with that. Let me know how it works out for you. Because I think I remember it saying somewhere in Scripture, I am the Lord, I change not. <laughs> I think I was in there somewhere. I think it might have been in there too. Uh, God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. See, the purpose of prayer is not to get God to do your will in heaven, but it's the purpose of it is to get you in alignment and I in alignment with his will on earth. Prayer is not to get God in alignment with my will. The purpose of prayer is to get me in alignment with God's will. That's like me using a guitar tuner, I using a guitar to tune a tuner. That don't make any sense. Okay. Y'all got me crunk this morning, praise the Lord. Pray for a brother, don't judge him, don't judge him. Okay. So, um, let your moderation be known in all men. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. Uh, prayer, supplication, the prayer, prayer, the prayers you praying for yourself. I, I love the model prayer um, in Matthew chapter 6. A lot of people mistakenly call it the Lord's Prayer, but it's not the Lord's Prayer. Like, our Father which art in heaven is not the Lord's Prayer. I know you've heard your whole life it's the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer is in, in John chapter 17 where it says, I pray for them, for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine and thine are mine and I am glorified. That's the Lord's Prayer. The model prayer is in Matthew chapter 6, and I think in maybe Luke chapter 5, maybe. Um, but it says, he said, after this manner, therefore, pray ye. So he's saying, pray like this. And actually, he said, don't pray like this, pray like that. That's like the, the whole chapter of Matthew chapter 6 is saying, don't be like this, but be like this. That's what the whole chapter of Matthew chapter 6 is about. Anyway, so in the model prayer, he said, our Father which art in heaven. I want you to notice something. He didn't say my Father which is in heaven. He said, our Father, which is in heaven. And if he's our Father, that means you and I are brothers and sisters. If you are in Christ, you are, like, all of these factions of Christianity arguing. Like, if you're waiting for me to argue with you, if you're waiting for me to argue with you, oh, you're going to be waiting a long time. Because I read a verse in my Bible that says, the servant of the Lord shall not strive. I'm, I ain't fixing to argue with you. You can disagree with me, and I celebrate your right to disagree with me, unlike most of the world today, who if you disagree with them, they claim that you're making them unsafe, and then they want to cancel you from society right, which is so hideously ridiculous that it can't, like, I don't have time to talk about it today. Maybe one of these days I'll do a whole video on the ridiculousness of cancel, cancel culture, right? Anyway, I, I, I celebrate the ideas. I celebrate the fact that people disagree with me, and I welcome it, as long as you are disagreeing with me with, from a valid point and not just saying, oh, you're just, like, like, you're just the Antichrist. Okay, well, that, you didn't actually say anything, bro, right? I, and I'm not going to argue with you either. Like, I'm, I'm not, there's no reason for me to argue, right? And, and by, the, by the way, the scripture says they will know we are Christians by our love, not by our anger, not by our attitude, not by the fact, I stand for the truth. That, that was not our identification card, but by our love. And see, if you can't love people that you disagree with, is it really love anyway? Different question for a different day. Okay. Um, so, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Prayer, the prayer that I'm praying to get my will in alignment with God's will. Supplication, the prayers that I'm praying for other people. One of the best prayers you can pray for other people, Lord, open their eyes. That's the prayer that Elisha prayed for his servant. Because if you are, like, overwhelmed by sadness depression, anger, it's because your focus is on something that's either missing or you wish were missing. But you're not focused on what's there. Nobody can be angry. Like, if you, if you wake up in the morning, and you open your eyes and they can see, 
you've opened a gift. Because you know how to make, you know how to open your eyes, right? Not everybody know how to open their eyes? But you don't know how to make them see. You get up out of your bed and you stand up. Well, you know how to stand up, but you don't know how to make your legs work. Am I telling the truth? By the time I come downstairs and have some breakfast, I got running water in my house and I've got electricity, I've got air conditioning. It's Florida, it's hot even at night in Florida. I've opened so many, by the, time my, by the time I get to my car in the morning, I've opened so many gifts. How can I walk through my day with anything other than an attitude of gratitude? And I, I, I don't, I, and by the way, I had an attitude of gratitude when I was broke. I didn't start having an attitude of gratitude when I started making money. money I, the money I, is not the thing I have the attitude of gratitude for. The thing I have the attitude of gratitude for is God has given me a life in which to represent him. I get to represent the king of kings on a foreign land called Earth. I'm an ambassador. Ambassador Myron. I like the sound of that. Okay, so, um, and everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, uh, let your request be made known unto God. And then it says, and the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds by Christ Jesus. So he says, if you will be joyful, if you will be joyful, and you will be willfully aware of the presence of the Lord. And if you'll stop being careful and start being prayerful, here's what's going to happen. You will be peaceful. The peace comes from God. When we, we get in connection with God, when we, get, when we get in that zone, that relationship zone, where we are praying, we know God's hearing from us, and we're reading his word, and we're hearing from him, we get in that zone, we know, oh, man, this is, this is something special. I don't have anything to worry about. God's got me. And the peace that passes all understanding, which means you can have peace even when you don't understand. I'm going to tell you something about everybody in this room, everybody watching me on YouTube right now. I'm going to tell you a little secret. You have gone through a major trial in your life, a major difficult trial of some kind in your life, or you are in a major difficult trial at this time in your life, or you will be going through a major difficult trial at some time in your life. But here's what I'm, I've got, this is coming from a man who's not, I, I mean, I know that some people erroneously think that money solves all your problems, but it doesn't. Money just solves your money problems. And there are some things money can't fix. And so you better have a piece that's bigger than the money that you have in your bank account. You better have a connection that's greater than the network of people that you have around you. Because you're going to go through something and you're going to get, some of you may get bad news from the doctor. You may lose a loved one. Like there's uh, my brother-in-law, two of his siblings were killed just in the last, like, but people die. It's, it's real. My oldest son passed away 15 years ago from, a car, from an injury he sustained in a car accident. You're going to go through something. Here's what I'm here to tell you. I, have a, I had polio as an infant. I have a metal brace on my leg, right? I walk with a brace. If I don't have it on, I have to use crutches. Why am I telling you that? Because we're all going to go through pain. In this life, you shall have tribulation. In this world, you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Oh, and isn't it interesting? He says, be of good cheer. I've overcome the world, right? What am I saying? I'm saying, the, yes, I understand that you're in pain, but if you will focus on the presence of the Lord, the peace is greater than the pain. That's what I'm saying. The, pain, the peace doesn't always make the pain go away. The peace gives you the ability to deal with the pain. The peace gives you the ability to have an attitude of gratitude even though you're in, though you're in pain. The peace gives you the ability to treat other human beings good even though you're in pain. Peace gives, like the peace that God gives, gives you the ability not to pass on the pain, but to pass on the peace to other people who are in pain. Okay, I'm going somewhere. I know you wish, I wish you'd hurry up and get there, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming, daddy, I'm coming. Okay, so um, the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and mind by Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure. And then he says, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. What's he saying? He's saying, be mindful. Be joyful. Be willful. Willfully aware of the presence of the Lord. Don't be careful. Be prayerful. If you'll do that, you'll be peaceful. And then he says, be mindful. He says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things, he's telling us what kinds of things we should think about. Do you understand, when the Apostle Paul is telling us what kind of things we should think about, he's also telling us what kind of things we shouldn't think about? If he's saying, what sort of thing, think, about what, think about what sort of things are true, 
Think on these things. Think on the things that are true. Don't think on lies. It says, it says, um, ver, uh, finally, brothers, what sort of things are true? What sort of things are honest? Don't think on dishonesty. Don't come up with illegitimate excuses like these people who put these WhatsApp, mess- WhatsApp messages as comments in my videos. They're con artists. They're dishonest. They're pretending to be me. They put a picture of me and a message from them. But I'm not the only one to do it to. I mean, Keenan, my goodness, boy, you got more, you got more duplicates. You got more <laughs> clones than anybody I've ever seen. I thought I had a lot of, boy, they coming after you, brother. Like, and so what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is what we've got to do, what we've got to do is we've got to make sure we're focused. If you are not doing these things, don't get to verse 13 and all of a, thing, all of a sudden think it applies to you. If you're not, if you're not, if you're not perpetually joyful and you're not willfully aware of the presence of the Lord, more aware of the presence of the Lord than you are the presence of all your problems and all your enemies and all your foes and all your peril. If you're not more aware of the presence of the Lord than that, if you're not more, if you're not more prayerful than careful and you're not mindful thinking about things that are true, things that are honest, things that are just, things that are pure. I want you to notice those things. What do you name there? He said, whatsoever things are, whatsoever things are true. Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure. Those are all character-based qualities. Those are not aesthetic. They're character-based. What does that mean? They have something to do with who you actually are as a person. And then he said, whatsoever things are lovely. Now we can start talking about the art of the deal, because we already talked about the science. Right? We're talking about the character. Now let's talk about the aesthetics. Now let's talk about what looks good, what sounds good, what feels good. Right? Are y'all tracking? So he said, whatsoever things are... Um, lovely, and whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, that means any truth, if there be any praise, think on these things. Here's what's interesting. The order in which God names things is, is interesting. Go read James, where it says, the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable. See, we live in a world that wants peaceability before purity. We want everybody to be, we want, we want to make sure we get along with everybody. We want to make sure we please everybody before we, that's more important than being right. And that more important than doing the right thing. We want to make sure nobody gets offended. Here's the deal. People are easily offended. That's the deal. People are not offended because you offended them. They're offended because they got offended. Yeah, that's right. I know. I, 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 Myron, that's not politically correct. I am not running for office. Let me make that clear. <laughs> okay. So be mindful. And then Paul goes into, hey, I've been your example of all these things. He says, those things which you've both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. What things? Those things we just talked about. And the God of peace shall be with you. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now, at the last, your care of me hath flourished again, wherein ye also, uh, you were also careful but lacked opportunity. In other words, you had a desire to take care of me. Paul's in prison when he wrote this. And I, he's writing to a church. We, I know that you desire to send me an offering but you lack the opportunity to do so. That's what he's saying, okay? Um, uh, bah, 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 bah. Lacked opportunity. Verse four, 11, not that I speak in respect of one. In other words, I'm not saying this because I'm lacking something. He's not, he's saying, I'm not writing this to you because I need something from you. Not that I speak in respect of one. Uh, for I have learned whatsoever state I'm in, therewith to be content. Now, I know a lot of people... Well, Myron, see what it says? I know whatsoever state I'm in, they're worth to be content. That's why you shouldn't care about money. Uh, that ain't what they say it. In fact, the next verse even sheds more clarity, more clarity. May I read it? Okay, here's what it says. I know both how to be abased and how to abound. In everything, where, um, in everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and hungry, both to be bound and to suffer need. What's Paul saying? Paul's saying... I know how to control myself when I have abundance and not think I'm better than, not think I'm more than, not look down on people, not talk down to people. But I know how to have peace when I have nothing. I know how to be satisfied with nothing, and I know how not to be superior when, I see, when it seems like I have everything. See, people take this out of context because the people who say, see, it says, I've learned, um, um, uh, what does it say about content? Uh, blah, blah, they say, um, I, 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 whatever so ever state I'm in, they're worth to be content. Right, okay. But see, the problem is most people who quote that haven't been in enough states to know if they know how to be content in all states or not. 
Like you've been in the whole same state your whole life. How do you know? Right? And I'm not, I'm just saying, like, let's let the word say what it says. Paul is in that verse, in the context, he's talking about the fact that a church wanted to deliver an offering to him, but they couldn't because he was in prison. And it's okay, I'm going to be all right because I know how to do well if I'm in prison or if I'm in the palace. I'm good. Well, then it says, I know both how, I'm going to read verse 12 again. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I'm instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. And then it says, I can do all things through Christ with strength of me. Did you see how that all built up from all the stuff that happened before? This is not an isolated verse that I get to get the name it and claim it, blab it and grab it. I can do all things through Christ with strength in me. Yes, you can do all things, but maybe not. Because if you're not perpetually joyful, you can't do all things through Christ with strength in you. And if you're, not, if you're not willfully aware of the presence of the Lord, you can't do all things through Christ with strength in you. And if you're not willing to be, not be careful but be prayerful, you can't do all things through Christ with strength in you. Are y'all picking up what I'm putting down? So if you're not, if you're not, um, if you're not um, um, mindful of things that are true and things that are just and things that are honest and things that are good and things that are lovely and things that are of good report, that's why I don't watch the news. It's not of good report. I ain't got time for it, right? Why? Because I want to think on things that are going to help me maintain and sustain a state of perpetual joyfulness. So that's why I said on the thumbnail of this video, Yes, you can. Maybe not. <laughs> or something like that. What it, something like that. It's not done yet. But, but that's what it'll say. So, so practice these principles. Like, practice joyfulness. Practice, practice, practice gratefulness. Practice peacefulness. Stop practicing carefulness and anxiety. Stop, invi- stop visualizing in, in 6K HD... 3D, all the bad stuff you think is going to happen to you. And use that energy to be grateful for all the good things you already have in your life. Hopefully this will help somebody somewhere, and hopefully it'll help somebody somewhere, help somebody somewhere. And if you like this video and you're on YouTube, please hit the like button, smash that like button. I mean, just smash it to pieces, right? Leave a comment, ask a question. We're in the process of aggregating some of the questions right now that we're going to use to turn into more videos to answer some of the questions that some of you have asked. So... So we're going to have a, a long time together, and I just, so, and subscribe. Yeah, make sure you subscribe, too. Then you'll get notified every time we do a video. In the meantime, in between time, love y'all. hope y'all can feel the love we got coming from this side of the camera to that side, from this side of the room to that side of the room, and we'll look forward to seeing y'all next Wednesday by the grace of God.